You are now watching Believe. Do you believe? Hello, Raider Nation. Welcome to another edition of the Believe in Raiders podcast presented by Bet Online. I'm Dennis Ackerman. Pleased to be joined by former Raider great Stanford Route. Stan, this edition of the podcast, we have a very special guest. He signed mm-hmm. with the Raiders in the offseason after spending last year with the Atlanta Falcons. He is a three-time Super Bowl champion. Silver and Black are hoping he can bolster the back end of that secondary. Joining us from New Jersey, Duran Harmon. Duran, how we doing, man? Doing good. Appreciate you guys having me on, Dennis. No, absolutely. Thank you for taking the time. So let me ask you this. You're a free agent. The main reason why you signed with the Raiders. Uh-huh. I mean, there's 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 too many to name, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just you look at the team uh, from the talent standpoint, um, obviously what they were able to accomplish last year. Um, just even with the adversities that they had to, you know, conquer through the season. So obviously, you know, a, a mentally tough team. Um, like I said, talent out the roof at every position. And then the coaching staff. You know, one thing that I realized is in this league, as much as, you know, having talent and having great players, you need great coaches as well to put that talent to use to give the organization the best chance to uh, be successful. So, it was just, you know, in my opinion, a match made in heaven. I'm just excited that, that everything came together, and I'm excited to be a part of Raider Nation. D, and now coming over to the dark side is what they always say about uh, Raider Nation. I want you to talk to me about, and I know you've only been here for a short time, but talk to me about the dichotomy or if there's a difference. I'm hoping that there's not one because that means we're going to have uh, good things ahead for us for years to come. But from your time out there in New England, and being around Bill Belichick and those great coaches and obviously winning those three Super Bowls, talk to me about what you saw as a New England Patriot and if there's any carryover right now with having Josh McDaniels being the HC and now just that mantra, the mindset, or just kind of like the approach to work every day. Yeah, well, I think the thing that was just, um, as I got older and been away from New England for a while, the thing that just still impressed me is just, um, the attention to detail that the entire team had each day, um, whether it was a lift, whether it was a run, uh, whether it was a walkthrough practice um, in the meeting rooms or just no matter where, you know, um, Coach Belichick did a great job that every day, no matter when you came in there, you gave your best effort and you was trying to reach a standard of excellence each and every day. So when you have a team that is based on trying to reach excellence every day, and, you know, you won't get there because nobody is ever perfect, but it's just a constant pursuit and a constant expectation. I mean, everybody in there getting it, everybody in there striving for something. And um, you come over here. I mean, obviously, we're trying to build something, but that same level of expectation is being brought in by, obviously, Coach McDaniels and uh, Pat Graham on the defensive side um, to say that we're, we are where we were at in New England would be simply false because that was a uh, a period of time that was built from not just me, but greats like Willie McGinnis, you mm-hmm. know, uh, Rodney, uh, Tom Brady, you know, Vrabel, you know, Vince Wilford, you know, just the Ty Law, the greats that set that standard to pass it on. And, you know, they're trying to build something similar in the Raiders. And I'm just, you know, excited to be a part of the the change and before we get to the next question i just got to read one uh <clears throat> sponsorship here to keep them happy and our partners at bet online continue to be the number one source for all your betting needs and sports info find all the latest odds news and sports development including this year's nhl hockey stanley cup final major league baseball the latest fighting news and even next season's early nfl futures Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BLEAVE to get the bonus and get into the action. Bet online where the game starts. Just want to give a shout out to my Golden State Warriors capturing their fourth title in eight years. Fellas, it's a dynasty, right? Deron, you've been part of you've been part of one. That, that this is a dynasty, right? I, I have to agree. I All mean, right. I, I got oh yeah. I was able to be there last night, and I thought the Celtics were going to make it happen, but, you know. Me too, the way the me too. You were at the, the way game? the Warriors came in there, I was. You know, we, we drove up. I was in New Jersey. We got to drive up, see the game. We drove back this morning, and the atmosphere was crazy. But 
you could tell the Warriors were on a mission from from the tip off. Even when they went down twelve two, they never blinked. And once they got control of the game, they never they never let it slip. Absolutely, Steph Curry's a top ten player. I don't want to hear any more of that crap that he's not. That put it to bed. <laughs> Enough of that conversation. Hey, Dron, I know you guys just finished up OTAs, and I know it's just mm-hmm. a small sample size of what the defense is going to look like. And let's face it, the Raiders have struggled on this side of the football for quite some time. So what has you excited about this group? Uh, just, you know, the overall talent in the group. You know, there's a lot of young, young, really, really talented players. You know, I mean, Max Crosby, we all obviously know him. You know, Chan Jones has been a – Great player, you know, uh, over the last decade, you know, Denzel Perriman, obviously, you know, but then, you know, working with, you know, Trayvon uh, Moore has been amazing, you know, just having him continually each and every day, just coming there with, with the right attitude, trying to get better, working his tail off, you know, him and, and Rod team as well. And obviously, you know, John Abram as well. It's just, you know, working specifically with the safety groups has been, you know, it's been amazing because it's just a lot of young guys who, who want, who wants to be great, who wants to take the next step. And, you know, the only way you can take the next step is take the next step, you know, getting better each day, you know, being in the playbook, not making the same mistakes over and over again, you know, just steady, just steady improvements. And the guys have been working their tails off to do that. And I'm just excited to see, you know, where it can get to and excited to put the work in in the summer to see where we can get to during the season. Speaking of Max Crosby, your new teammate, also along with Chandler Jones, a person that you were teammates with uh, back up for your days in New England. Talk to me about what you feel the ceiling for this defense can be. And I'm asking that is specifically mainly because this will be this for the first time at least that I can that I can think of that you've had two top-notch pass rushers. Obviously, you guys had a great defense in New England. We all know that. That's why you guys won three Super Bowls and Tom Brady and everybody else. But as far as what do you think the ceiling for this defense can be for the talent that you see across the board from top to bottom, the front end to the back end? I think the ceiling is what we make it at the end of the day. Um, To sit here and say it's going to be this or that, I think that, you know, be very immature just because um, we have to put the work in. And I'll say the thing that I've been, like I said, encouraged with is that guys want to put the work in. You know, guys are staying out there when they can to work extra. Um, Guys are, you know, being there as long as they can, you know, to work extra. Guys are working together after practice. Guys are, you know, meeting together on their own time just, you know, to make sure this thing gets, you know, done the right way. So, I just think the ceiling is what we make it and who we will be or who will who will who we will be, you know, referred to as from a defensive standpoint will just be based off what we do week in and week out. And it only starts in well, it already started in OTAs, but we gotta keep working in training camp to the point where, you know, we can just be a reliable defense for our offense to help them, you know, not be on the field long and do our job at preventing points so that they can score points and that we can win games. Hey, Duran, I'm just curious. I mentioned earlier you got the three Super Bowl rings all with New England, and I know you've only been there a short time, but are some of the guys who, you know, are looking to get to the top of the mountain where you've been, are they, you know, coming to you for the experience and, how, you know, what it takes and how to get there? Uh, yeah, you know, any, you know, anytime you go to a new team and, you know, like I've been fortunate to play um, in the big game, to win the big game, to lose the big game. So, you know, there are always be questions, you know, and, the thing is, I'm an open book, you know, and I pride myself on being a great teammate. So the guys know anytime they have anything to ask me, whether it's regard to football, off the field, you know, relational stuff, you know, that's why I'm here, you know, because I had those guys for me as well when I was, you know, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, and even all the way up to now, you know, I still have mentors that I lean on that I, you know, can ask questions with, you know. Uh, talk to whether it's football related or you know off the field related so you know we just want to build that type of locker room where you know it's it's more than football you know it's it's about literally the guy next to you sacrificing whatever it is so that you know that that guy is going to do his job you do your job so that he can take care of his family and we can do everything we can to win the game and have just great team success all right d got a quick question for you 
and this could be this could be professionally, this could be personally, this could this could be all encompassing. Right now, you as a 31 year old man, you came out in 2013. What advice would you give to your younger self as far as maybe anything that you've realized in life that you know what? Okay, I wish I could take that back, or simply I just wish I would have done that differently. Or just if you're giving some sort of a, a guidance to, let's say, a rookie right now in the DB mm -hmm. locker room. What mm -hmm. advice would you give to your former self? I'm sorry, your younger self or mm -hmm. a young DB coming up in the ranks? Uh, run your own race. <laughs> I think we're, 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 <laughs> we're such in a uh, era of where, you know, we compare this player with that player. You know, we're, our child, we're always trying to figure out, you know, if we're better than this guy or, if we, you know, if we're, we're good enough or we're this. But one thing that I realized is just, you know, when you just focus on yourself, your own development, how you are becoming a better football player, how you are becoming a smarter football, when you literally just, you know, minimize, you know, what you're thinking about and what you're putting your effort in, that is when real growth, you know, comes about. You know, if you're worried about this guy and what he's got going on or what this teammate got going on, you know, you're, you're pulling yourself away from the things that truly matter the most. And as I've gotten older and the more that I focus on um, my own well-being so that I can be the best teammate for my teammates, that's why I feel the improvement, you know, the maturity, all of that took a step up so that I can be not only a better player, but a better teammate, you know, for my teammates. Hey, Duran, you're mm. arguably now in the toughest division in the NFL. Mm -hmm. I mean, Denver, Russell Wilson, Chargers, uh, Justin Herbert, and of course, Patrick Mahone with the Chiefs, man. I mean, this is, there's no days off for you guys yeah. in this crazy <laughs> AFC West. Yeah, it, 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 <laughs> it's, it's exciting. You know, I think um, as a competitor, um, when, you know, you enjoy competing and you enjoy, you know, playing against the best and beating the best, you know, that is what drives you. You know, that's what drives me to still be playing at this, you know, um, this level right now. You know, it's not about, you know, any money or, you know, fame. it's about competing. It's about winning. It was about the opportunity to get on the best team that I could so that I could help the team in any way that I can, you know, to ch achieve team success. And, you know, that's what I'm focused on. And that's why I'm excited because, I mean, if you want to, you know, be the best at the end of the year, you got to beat the best. And we have mm -hmm. plenty, plenty of great teams <laughs> in our division. That's going to make it hard every week. And not only, you know, the division, but, the, you know, the conference is tough as well, too. You know, all the top tier quarterbacks and all the top tier teams just in the AFC in general, like it's going to be a battle and it's going to be fun, though. Like this is what you play the game for. Um, this is what you compete for. And as you can see, I keep smiling ear to ear because, like I said, I'm just I'm truly excited about the opportunity that we have as a team to go out there and compete this season. Top two quarterbacks you played against and why? Ooh, Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. Okay, uh, because, why? Yeah, uh, they know everything. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy because uh, you're like, no way, but those guys are just – at a, a level of their own um, from them playing um, and understanding the schemes uh, from the ball placement um, to the leadership to, um, in my opinion, just always making their team better, you know, just raising the level of uh, competition amongst their peers. Um, and like I said, just, you know, ball placements, like ball placements, understanding where they need to go and making quick decisions, you know, a lot of quarterbacks, they get in trouble when they can't over and over make the quick decisions. And you mm -hmm. watch Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady's, and you think about how many offensive drives where they orchestrate, you know, a 15-play drive, you know. And it's not just once, you know. It's, it's two or three of those a game where it's just yep. like the guys just don't make a mistake, you know. They'll know where they need to go, and it's like, oh, that's covered up. Okay, check down. That's five, six yards, you know. A lot of people, a lot of quarterbacks, hardly any quarterbacks can continue to just dissect the defense stay patient stay with the call do what they need to do and just keep driving their offenses those two are just they're anomaly and every time I get the chance to play to them um 
it's already hard enough to play any of these quarterbacks because they're very, very talented, but those two are just in a league of their own, in my opinion. Mm, couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> Ron, I got a two-parter for you. I, I read uh-huh. you got 21 career interceptions. Mm. So the first part is, do you remember all 21? And the <laughs> second part is, is there a quarterback who you haven't picked off that you really, really want to? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, well, I would say, uh, I, I think, I don't know if I could sit here and, and, and name them. Okay. But if you showed me, if you showed me all the interceptions, I could probably tell You'd you. be able to recall it. Ran. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, I could remember. Yeah. Okay, yep, I'm I remember that one. Um, then you said uh, the quarterback that I would want to pick off the most. I mean, it has to be Tom, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the greatest, you know. He's a teammate of mine. We get to chat, you know, from time to time. And, you know, I played him, I think it was three times since we both left New England. And he has put it on me each time. So I just think eventually if that time comes around when I can play him again, hopefully I can, you know, return the whooping a little bit back over to him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I know exactly what you're saying. Like, you know, it's it's difficult oftentimes to be able to remember all the quarterbacks, but everybody has those few that either, A, they were really, really tough to pick off, so you always mm-hmm. remember them, or the ones that you always will remember. It seems like that, you know, for me, it was always Phillip Rivers. And I don't know mm-hmm. why, but I never was able to pick off Phillip Rivers for the San Diego Chargers for so many years. So I know exactly what you're saying about mm-hmm. certain quarterbacks that you just feel like they just always know where you're going to be before mm-hmm. you even going to be there. Exactly. Those are the, like we talk about the smart quarterbacks, the quarterbacks who understand the game, the quarterbacks who are like offensive coordinators out there who are mm-hmm. putting everybody in the right position. And at the end of the day, putting their organization in positions to be successful. You know, D, and um, I talk about this with uh, with Dennis a lot, is how it's interesting how you say that Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady both being the top two quarterbacks that you've ever faced. And it's it's so interesting that the older quarterbacks are still at the top of the heat in today's game. And I think a lot of that goes back to just the simple spread offense and things like that, because these kids – are now being in high school running those types of offenses. And then it goes to college. And now because you're seeing so much of that, that's where a lot of NFL franchises are going to, to try to go ahead and ease the learning curve for a lot of these quarterbacks coming from college to pro. And I think that there still is an element of natural quarterback play where you have to simply take the ball from under center, play action fake you got to be able to when you turn your back to the defense the defense can do a whole lot of different things while you're in your play action and because of that you really can only read half of the field and you still have Mm -hmm. to be able to make that throw over the linebacker under the safety and you got to put it there so it either a doesn't get picked off or b that receiver doesn't get his head taken off and Mm -hmm. within that natural just that, that natural primal quarterback play that's what I think the NFL is kind of losing because of the spread mm. offense. And, you know, quarterbacks don't have to read defense as much. What do you think about mm-hmm. that? I think you have a fair statement because just, just the game is just like just my decade in the game. The offense is just completely different now. You yeah. know, it's more spread. You know, you had these quarterbacks in the gun. You had the read zone, um, you know, because a lot of these quarterbacks nowadays, you know, they might not be the most athletic, but they're athletic enough to, you know, make it, you know, make a move, run for 15, you know, so you have to, in the end, account for them um, as runners. But, I mean, at the end of the day, you're going to need that quarterback, like you said, to suck that, you know, linebacker in, to run play action, to be able to, you know, make split decisions, you know, when he turns his back. And I think just – like you said, we're, we're getting – the NFL is just getting away from it a little bit, you know. But the thing is, these quarterbacks – these new quarterbacks are bringing a new element of quarterback play to the game. Yeah. So it's like – it's just – the league is just uh, uh, transitioning or, mm-hmm. or transforming into a different style of offensive play. And the thing that, you know, the fans love about it is it's more points. 
it's more exciting. You know, you got more receivers going for a thousand yards than we have ever had before. No doubt you know? about it. Yes. You look at all, you know, you look at all these, you know, we talk about receivers, man. I mean, you look at the Chargers, just their pass catchers, you know, the Chiefs, you know, their pass catchers, you know, the uh the Dolphins, you know, just everybody the, the Bengals, you know, everybody is having, you know, three, four, just really, really good pass catcher because that's just the way it's going. Spread offenses. Let's get our playmakers the ball. Let's score points. So I just think we're just in a transition right now. And while it's a little different than what it used to be, I think there is still some good to it uh, for the uh, the game now. Hey, Duran, we'll get you out of here on this one, man. I know you're involved with spreading awareness about autism in the African-American community, and this is National Autism Awareness Month. What do you have going on? Tell us about it. Oh, yeah. So uh, National Autism Month was in April. and We got to partner um, – um, with what national um, awareness uh, we did some things uh, just you know sp- spreading awareness uh, making out some posts um, we're actually in the midst of now to playing a karaoke event in uh, October in Las Vegas uh, to benefit um, the national um, awareness and they're also looking to partner with a local um, um, autism uh, awareness uh uh, community. So um, we had a uh, karaoke event in what was it in Boston in 2019, where we raised over a hundred thousand dollars. So we're looking to oh, do great. the same, just so that we, like like you said, just in the black community, there is a just a delay in mm-hmm. recognizing yes, and uh, identifying, you know, autism amongst you know the African American community. So. The more that I can do to raise awareness, the more I can do um, to spread light on that, to create more sources, uh, to create more uh, opportunities. I feel like that is my duty, and um, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, My nephew, Nicholas, um, is the reason why I got involved um, in autism. He will be turning 13 in July. Just seeing his progression from three to 13 right now he's in school um he's in he just finished seventh grade you know he has his friends he's the manager for the football team um you know just a lot of good stuff you know just where my sister was just an amazing advocate you know they were telling her one thing she was like no this is not what it is you know it's something else and she just kept fighting but you know that's just not the case for every kid so the more I can do to get you know kids screened and uh, um, aware of, you know, them having autism at an earlier age will just close the gap so that they can be on a level, play, a level playing field um, with everybody else. So, yeah, you know, a lot good. going on that's there, awesome. but, you know, we're, we're getting it rolling. And I'm excited to bring karaoke night um, to Las Vegas. And, hey, if you guys are not busy, when we, you know, finalize the day, I will send you guys a Absolutely. invitation. No, and I'll, definitely guys, I'll definitely I'll definitely be right, there, man. That's beautiful to hear. That. Bring that awesome. singing voice too. <laughs> hey, Duran, we really appreciate you joining us, man. This was great stuff. Uh, best of luck to you with the, not only with the event, but with the upcoming season as well. Yeah, man. Uh, DH, right. pretty appreciate having you on, man. I love everything that you're doing on the field and off the field. Best of luck to you. And definitely we got to have you back on again soon. You got it. Hey, All right, Raider Nation, that's going to do it All for right, another edition of the Believe in Raiders podcast presented by Bet Online. For my partner, Stanford Route, and for our guest, Duran Harmon. I'm Dennis Ackerman. May all your punts find the coffin corner. Bang. All right, there we go. Hey, Duran, greatly yeah, appreciate it, man. On, Thank man. you so much. We're uh, going to get, uh, oh, by the way, you need to tw- change your, tw- your Twitter picture. Get out of that Honolulu <laughs> blue and gray. Man, <laughs> man don't, don't listen to him, D. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Hey, I'll tell you what, he's not lying, man. That was, hey, being there was a tough year. I'm trying to tell you, that was going from the Patriots to that, like, yeah. just a complete different, you know, that took a lot of mental toughness not to go I can jump imagine. off a bridge. I can imagine. <laughs> I'm sure. Trust me, I get it. I get it, it man. But it, but it helped, though. It put a lot in perspective for mm-hmm. me, you know. It, it, you know, like I talk about from a maturity standpoint, as a leader standpoint, put a lot in perspective. So I'm thankful for that time, but he's right. I I need to put I got some new picks too. So I need to go ahead and do it. I need to move on. <laughs> oh man, All I right, love man. it. I love it. All right, man. Well, right, hey, Drum, we're gonna hey, get man. this posted tonight for sure. It'll be up on, on uh, I'm okay. gonna tweet it out. I got your Twitter handle, so I'll make sure to include you on that. All right. 
All right, sounds good. And, all right, hey, hey happy it's Father's Day, time in the season. Hey, yeah. happy Father's Day to you guys, too. All Appreciate right, it. Then. All right. Appreciate all right. it, man. Be good. Let's go. Thank you for watching Believe. You can find more great content at Believe.com. That's B-L-E-A-V.com. Do you believe?